can't believe it. A couple of days ago, it was warm. I could jump into the lake. There was sunshine everywhere. It's a bummer because today is my birthday. By the way, I've turned 45 years old today. Normally, I'm not the type of guy who expects any birthday gifts. Uh, instead, I want to give you a little gift. I want to give you an After Effects tutorial, something that is related to my birthday. First, I was thinking of an animated birthday cake with 45 candles, but I had a better idea. Instead of 45 candles, I put 45 little bulbs into each clip. It's done 100% in After Effects, and you don't even need a particle system. Basically, you can use any video footage. Here, I chose a footage where nothing is moving except of the camera, which is perfect for the fast technique I'm gonna show you. At the end of this tutorial, I'm gonna give you a pro tip how to handle complex footage. But because I wanna keep this tutorial simple for you, let's move on with this clip. So I'm gonna grab the footage and drop it onto the Create a new composition icon. Let's reveal the tracker window and push the track camera button. As you can see, a 3D camera tracker is applied to the footage and it automatically starts to analyze the video. After it's done, you can select a bunch of tracking points one by one while holding the shift key. In my case, it's 45 tracking points. Then I'm gonna right click and select Create 45 nulls and Camera. Let's leave it like that for now. Create a new composition that has square format, 1080 by 1080 pixels, name it Sphere and hit OK. In this composition, I'm gonna create a new solid with the same size, choose a middle gray color, which is 808080 in hexadecimals, and apply a CC Sphere effect on it. I'm gonna change the radius to 400, light direction to negative 45 degrees so the light is coming from the upper left, ambient to 30, diffuse to 65, specular to 100 to get this nice little highlight, roughness to 0,08 and reflective to 60. Next, I'm gonna apply an exposure and reduce gamma correction to 0,5. Let's go back to the footage composition, select all track nulls and drag and drop the sphere composition onto them while holding the ALT key. This way, each track null is replaced by the sphere composition. I'm gonna press A to reveal the anchor point attributes and change X and Y position to 540, which is half the sphere composition size, in order to center the spheres. Then I'm gonna press T to reveal the opacity attributes and increase the values to 100% to make the spheres visible. They're too big for my taste, so I'm gonna press S for scale and decrease the size to 12%. Let's add the 3D tracker camera to the selection, right click, select Precompose, name the precomposition 45 spheres, hit OK and change its blending mode to Add. In preparation for the glow effect, I'm gonna select the footage layer, apply a curves effect to it and adjust the curve like this to make the footage a bit darker. This way, the glow effect will have a better impact. I'm gonna create a new composition with the same square size, create a new solid, this time in black, and apply a lens flare effect to it. Then I'm gonna change the flare center dimensions to 540 to center the lens flare, increase flare brightness to 110% and increase the solid scale to 140. After that, I'm gonna duplicate the 45 spheres composition, rename it to 45 lens flares, open this composition and replace every sphere layer with a composition with a single lens flare we created before. Again, I alt drag it onto the selection of the sphere compositions. Back in the footage composition, I'm gonna duplicate the 45 spheres layer and alt drag the 45 lens flares composition onto the top layer to replace it. Now we have some glass looking spheres with some kind of a glow inside, which remind of little bulbs. Let's recreate the depth of field. What we need is a depth map. So I'm gonna create a new shape layer, add a rectangle, change the size to the composition size, 1920 by 1080 pixels, add a gradient fill, change endpoint X position to zero, set start point Y position to negative 540 and endpoint Y position to 540. 
I'm gonna decrease the opacity a bit so I can see at the same time how the depth of field in the footage looks like. And we can see that the focus is in the center of the frame and it gets more blurry above and below the center. And this is why we need a depth map that is black in the center, which means no blur, and that gets gradually white towards the top and the bottom edge. And that's the cool thing about the shape layer, because I can design the gradient the way I want, which is not possible with a gradient ramp effect. I'm gonna decrease the X position of the endpoint to tilt the gradient a bit to match it with a depth of field. Then I'm gonna hide the shape layer below the footage layer, select the 45 spheres layer, apply a camera lens blur effect to it and set the blur map layer to shape layer 1. Let's set the blur radius to 15 to increase the blur effect. And corresponding to the depth map layer, the spheres get more and more blurry towards the edges. I'm gonna copy the camera lens blur effect and paste it to the 45 lens layers layer. Looks good so far, but somehow the bulbs still don't feel connected to the footage. What we need is the moss on the tree to be illuminated by the glowing bulbs. So I'm gonna duplicate the footage layer as well as the 45 spheres layer and set track mat of the top footage layer to alpha. Now the footage is masked by the 45 spheres. And we can now brighten up these spots separately. But because the illumination is outside the spheres, we need to make these spots a bit bigger. That's why I'm gonna apply a minimax effect to the track mat layer, put it above the camera lens blur effect, change channel to alpha and set radius to 15. The spots are now bigger, but quite blocky. So let's apply a fast box blur effect, place it below minimax and set blur radius to 15. Next, I'm gonna darken the bottom footage layer even more and brighten up the top footage layer with the help of the existing curve effects in order to increase the impact of the illumination. And now the bulbs are seamlessly integrated into the footage which looks more realistic. But let's do some final touch to the glass bulbs. I'm gonna select the top 45 spheres layer, apply a light sweep effect to it, set direction to 10 degrees so the light comes from the upper left, width to 300, edge intensity to 40, edge thickness to 2, choose a yellow color and set the blending mode to screen so it gets a bit softer. This way we simulate some kind of a backlight which gives the spheres more depth. Just google 3 point lighting if you want to know more about it. Then I'm gonna duplicate the footage layer and its track mat, delete fast box blur and minimax of the 45 spheres layer and make the footage layer darker once again. Why am I doing this? I just want to have more contrast in the bulbs. I want the glows inside to stand out a bit. Okay, one last thing. Let's breathe some life into the bulbs. I'm gonna open the 45 lights composition, select all layers except of the camera layer, press T to reveal the opacity attributes, alt click on the stopwatch to enable expressions and type in wiggle open parentheses 10, 50 closing parentheses. I'm gonna copy the expression and do the same with the remaining 44 layers. The expression simply means that 10 times in a second the opacity will randomly change by the maximum value of 50. In other words, starting from 100%, the opacity randomly changes down to 50% with a frequency of 10 times a second. Now let's open the 45 spheres composition, select all sphere layers and insert the expression into the opacity attributes again. Of course, I could have done this before I duplicated the 45 spheres composition. That would have saved me repeating this procedure. Okay, that's basically it. Let's hit play and watch the result. Looks good. Now we have some sparkling little lights. Okay, what about this footage? Lots of grass objects moving independently. The method I showed to you won't work here. After solving the 3D camera, you would just get null objects that don't correspond to the moving grass. Unfortunately, I don't know a method in After Effects yet how to convert the 2D tracks into null objects. So I had no other choice than tracking the 45 spots on the grass one by one. That was really pain in the, um, you know what I mean. The best solution I found for me was using Cinema 4D. I had to build a rig consisting of a motion tracker, Espresso, and MoGraph, thanks to 
Noseman who made a tutorial about it. It took a while, but once built, you can apply it to any footage and you can get two denotes literally in a mouse click. Set the number of tracks slightly higher than intended, auto track the footage and you can export the notes into After Effects and delete the notes that are gone out of control. But that's another story because, as I said, I wanted to keep this tutorial simple. Hope my tutorial was helpful for you. If so, please like my video, subscribe my channel and turn on the bell to get notified of more tutorials. See you next time.